G'day guys, welcome back. Welcome to my kitchen. We're going to do some baking today. Now, a lot of you have been asking for my uh, shortbread recipe, the one with the jam in the middle. And I sort of showed you a very quick little glimpse of it, I think in the last video. So um, yeah, a lot of you wanted to see that. So um, I cut up my butter a couple of hours ago and just had it sitting like this because it was in the fridge. So I just cut it up and let it sit like that for an hour or so just till it comes to room temperature. Now, don't try and rush this recipe, okay? It, it, it won't work if you put the butter in the microwave and it melts it just won't work you'll end up with really flat little cookies so that was 500 grams of salted butter going in um, and that is 7.6 ounces okay for those of you that work in ounces now the next thing I'm going to add is some icing sugar and it's really easy if you pop your bowl on your scale put your sieve on there as well then turn it on and you can weigh and sieve at the same time. Isn't that a good idea? Yes. All right, so um, I'll just tell you about the ingredients as we go. So icing sugar, we need five, um, 250 grams of icing sugar. So that's half the amount of the butter that we've got, which is 8.8 .8 ounces. Let's keep my icing sugar in here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's see if I can do this. So I'm not getting it in the way. So 250 grams. Very up to 150. I hope you guys are enjoying my cooking videos. <laughs> I'm no expert baker, believe me, but I enjoy doing it. And um, I guess if you guys want to see, I'm happy to show you what I do as well. Whoops, that's a bit over. There we go, 250 grams. Now, let's move that out of the way and we'll just need to sift this. And then once we've sifted the icing sugar, and when I say we, I mean me, um, I'll put it in with the butter and then we're going to cream the butter and the sugar together. And that's a really important step because we want really light, aerated, crispy, melt in the mouth, delicious shortbread cookies. So it's, a, it's an important step. Now I need a spoon, push those lumps through. This one that I'm using is just, um, it's an icing sugar mixture. So you know how there's pure icing sugar and then there's icing sugar mixture. This is just the mixture because it's, I find it easier to, to deal with. The pure icing sugar is like, it can get really, really quite solid. Uh, this one's got a little bit of corn flour in it or corn starch. That's my oven <laughs> beeping, tell me it's at temperature. So we'll pour that in. Okay, so yeah, that's just the icing mixture. You could use the icing sugar as well if you wanted to, but pure icing sugar, that's fine. Right, now what we need to do is, like I said, this is the important part. I am just going to mix this on low just to get that icing sugar kind of wettened so it doesn't fly up in your face and then you can slowly increase the speed. So what we're going to do is we're going to mix this for 10 minutes on high speed. That's my high speed then and uh, every few minutes I will come through and I will just wipe down the sides with my little spatula there. All right, so I'll see you at the end of the 10 minutes when this is done. But check out the color, see how it's still yellow. When we come back, it's still gonna be light and fluffy and marshmallowy texture. See you then. All right, so that's our 10 minutes up. And look how that looks. Looks luscious, doesn't it? So yeah, it's really important to do that step. You know when you're baking a cake, you do the similar thing. You, you beat your um, butter and sugar first, you cream it. So similar thing, because you want a really light aerated mix. Look at that. <laughs> that looks so good. Tastes really good too. So that's what you're after. So now that that's done, 
I'll just leave the whipping attachment on just for a, another minute and we'll add the vanilla in. So I like using vanilla extract. So I'll do two teaspoons of the vanilla. In you go. And in you go. All right, so that's that done. Vanilla extract. And we'll just beat that again, just till it's in, probably 30 seconds, till it's in. And then we'll weigh out the flour. I'll wait till that stops, because it's a bit noisy, isn't it? So that should be fine. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this whisk attachment and I'm going to put the paddle attachment on. I've got a sink of <laughs> my kitchen sinks full of hot soapy water so I just throw everything straight in and then that way at the end of my bake Everything's soaked, it's ready to, to wash up. Okay, so here we go, flour time. Now we need 450 grams of plain white flour. And that uh, is 15.8 ounces. Aren't you glad I converted it all for you? Here we go, 450 grams. Again, put it on the scale, it just makes it easier. Then you don't have to weigh it. You know, and then sift it. Just use it. Just use it once. 448. 52. There we go. 450 grams of flour. Now I'm just going to move that out of the way and I'll sift this one. I'll try not to make too much of a mess. It's nice having holidays. I'm still on holidays. I, I go back to work next week. I don't know if I want to, to tell you the truth. All right, now, it's been nice. I've had like a month off because I was waiting for puppies to be born. And then I don't like leaving the puppies until they, they can walk around and their eyes are open. So three weeks of age, they can do that. And then I can I'll go back to work. Right, um, corn flour. I usually empty everything into my container, so I don't have the box with me, I'm sorry. Uh, 100 grams of corn flour, that is uh, three and a half ounces, 3.5 ounces. There we go, 100 grams, perfect. All right, now we're finished with the scale. We can move that. I'll sift this as well. Now I've got my oven coming to temperature. Now I'm using a fan forced oven, so I've got it set to 170 degrees Celsius, and that's the fan. If you don't use a fan oven, you can set it to 190 degrees, and if you're using Fahrenheit, that is 375 degrees without the fan. I always use my fan when I'm baking, I, I don't know why, <laughs> I just always do. So if using a fan, you drop your temperature by 20 degrees. All right, so that's that done. Make sure you whisk all your corn flour into your flour so that you don't get big globs of corn flour in your mix. You want it to be evenly distributed before you add it to your batter. Now, once we add this to our um, butter and sugar mix, we just wanna mix it until it's just combined, okay? Not too much, because we don't want, you know when you're baking a cake and you overwork your flour, and you don't get a very nice fluffy texture. It's the same with this. You don't want to overwork your flour and get too much gluten built up in it. All right, so let's just start this off on low. Again, don't want to get a face full of flour. So just on low to begin with. And I just like to tap the sides to get the flour to kind of fall off the sides as well and go down. So once that's mixed in, I'm just going to put it on high for about one minute. Like so. 
and I'll come back to you in a minute. I will scrape down the sides halfway through. So there's my oven. And as you can see, I've got it set to fan 170 degrees. <laughs> this is my kitchen. <laughs> All right, back here. Now, I'm going to just lift that up. I'm going to put you back on the tripod because I can't do this while I'm holding the, the camera. Um, here we go. Pop you back on. And we'll get to the exciting part. We're going to pipe. Oh, it's a big, thick, heavy mix now. It's still soft enough that you can pipe it though. I'm sorry if it looks a bit yellow. It's probably just the lighting in my kitchen. You know, the overhead lights makes everything look a bit yellow, doesn't it? But it's very, very pale, pale yellow. Looks gorgeous. Let's see if I can get that out. I'm gonna get every little bit out of there. Although if you like to lick the bowl and lick the mixer attachments, you don't want to take too much off, do you? Because you want to save some for the licking. <laughs> I always used to do that as a kid. Probably still do it now, and I shouldn't say that, but all right, we'll save that for later. I'll pop it in the sink. All right, so now what we need to do is we've got our tray. Now I've got these trays organized. Um, I've got four of them, actually. Big trays, they only just fit in my stove, my oven. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take a little bit of this dough and I'm gonna put a little bit in each corner, like so. And that'll just hold our baking paper down so it doesn't move around. Because once you start piping onto it, it kind of sticks the dough sticks to it, so do that. Now, I've got, I like to use these. These are my piping guns or icing guns, whatever you want to call them. You can just use an ice, icing bag if you want to and put an attachment on. I just find these easier. Although sometimes the little attachments break off, like they fall out and I have to glue them back on, which is very annoying. So this is the one I'm going to use for my dough and this is the one I'm going to use for my jam because it's got the little hole in it. And I'm using this jam. I'm using raspberry jam. I like raspberry jam. But you can use strawberry jam, you can use apricot, whatever you like. That's it there. Um, it has the seeds, but it hasn't got any big lumps. If you have something that's got really big lumps, it won't fit through there. It'll just get caught up. That probably won't work. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. Don't laugh at my videoing. <laughs> I'm not that good when it comes to being in the kitchen. And usually I'm just like in my studio and the camera's on the tripod, on the table in front of me, and I don't have to worry about moving it around and zooming in and zooming out. So forgive me if um, my video skills are not up to scratch. Right, here we go. We're just gonna put some of this gorgeous batter in here. Is it a batter or a dough? Oh, I don't know. What's the difference? You have a pancake batter and you have a bread dough, don't you? I don't know what the difference is. All right, so that's that one. We'll put that on there. Oops, I never go straight. Okay, so here we go. I might bring you down a little bit so that you can see from a different angle. All right, here we go. It's a bit of a stretch while it's full because <laughs> my little hands. All right, I'm going to try and do this without getting myself too much in the way. I'm just going to come over here. To... Oh, it's a bit hard for me to do it without getting my whole arm in the way, but I'll try my best. So we want six across and four down, okay? I don't like making them too big. 
otherwise um, they really spread out a lot in the oven. Sorry if my arm's in the way. Yeah, I found that if I make them too big, they're, they're kind of too heavy and they just spread out. And it's nice just having a little bite, isn't it? A little bite of a cookie. They don't have to be too big. Oops, you're a bit small. Ah, look, I've run out and I've got one spot to do. Let me refill. This one will need just a little bit more. Ah, here comes the rain. There we go. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'll move that over for a minute, I'll get the jam out. When I first did this, um, all the jam came out the bottom and there was this big puddle of jam on there on the bench. I thought, oh, what's going on? So make sure that you put your finger over the nozzle like that. <laughs> um, I have tried with the syringe, but because I've got seeds in my jam, uh, it blocked the nozzle up. It did not work. So for all these cookies, you probably need half um, a tub of jam. So I've used the other half of my previous recipe. Um, what's that? What's the measurement on it? 425, uh, 455. So half of that. Just pop all that in there. made a bit of a mess all right now keep your finger over the top while you're squirting this pushing it down otherwise you're going to get jam everywhere look at that I've made a mess okay so now um, you've got to be really careful with the jam you don't want too much otherwise it's all going to ooze out and um, it'll just be a bit overpowering I'm just, I'll start down here and then I'll turn the tray around just put a little bit if you can just on the top just a little bit on the top and give it a tiny little squeeze basically you just want it sitting on the top because when that cookie collapses down you'll just have a little bit of jam sitting on top it's gonna be really careful not to do too much <laughs> all right I'm just gonna turn that around like so trying to get it just to sit on top and give it a tiny little squirt so there's a little bit underneath and when the jam cooks it kind of goes all hard, a bit hard and sticky which is lovely my husband actually likes the ones where the jams all float out he eats those ones first right so that's the first tray done I'm going to move on to the second tray and uh, then I'll put two in the oven at once so I'll just move that out of the way Get the next one down. Um, I'm just going to put you on fast forward while I do this one. So the first two trays are in the oven. Um, I set my timer for nine minutes. Got another six-ish minutes to go. I will have to turn my trays halfway around because my bottom tray gets hotter than the top tray. So after half half time, I'll change them over. So I'm just um, continuing while those are in the oven. I'm just going to continue and uh, pipe some more trays and uh, I'll see you when they are ready to come out of the oven when when they're ready they'll have this ever so slight golden edge there along the bottom so 
Yeah, just got to be careful not to overbake them. You want them to stay really pale, but just a hint of colour around the edges, and then they're done. So here they are, out of the oven. They do flatten a little bit, as you see, because they've got a very high butter content in them. So, um, yeah, they do flatten out. But that's okay. It's the taste that matters, isn't it? Now, I've got another one in the oven. Let me just make sure I'm getting him out. This is the extra tray I did. <laughs> because um, I had extras left over, extra batter left over. There they are. Now, let's have a look. I've got some that have come out before these. Oh, there's my timer. Hang on. All right, all right, I know. You're okay. I've got a few more in there. So here are some I prepared <laughs> earlier. These were, the, these were the first lot that came out. Um, and you can see how they've caught a little bit on the edges there. Um, as I said, my oven gets hotter on the bottom shelf on the left there. So that happens, but they look gorgeous. Let's have, oh, that's the back. You can see the bit of jam underneath. And you can see all those holes, those aerated holes that we, we created when we whipped the butter and the sugar, hey? So yummy. Even the darker one. Let's have a look at the darker one. I just give them a bit of a, a shake like that because sometimes the jam is touching the bottom of the paper and you just want to make sure that they're going to lift off okay. Beautiful. Mm, yum. So here's all the ones that have come out of the oven already. And the ones that have got the jam that's spilt out like that. Those are my husband's favourites. <laughs> He'll eat them first because he thinks they've got more jam in them. <laughs> really yummy. Let's eat this one, hey? Mmm. It's crispy. <laughs> and then it just dissolves away into your mouth. Mmm. So good. Yummo. That's my cookbook. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, yum. I made that cookbook. I typed up all my recipes. It took me 18 months tapped up all my recipes, took photos of everything, <laughs> uploaded it to a book and then they sent it to me. So, yep, I only did a few, you know, for myself and for my my family. So, um, I've got one more little tray in the oven, but oh, I need to eat another one. Let's eat this one here with the jam that's fallen out as well. Yum! Mm. I'm going to break one in half. So that you can see what they look like. I need two hands. My phone updated the other day and the focus is just, it's different. It's got this little weird circle with a lock on the screen. Oh, struggles. All right, here we go. See, it's, it's really, really light. Oh, it's going to struggle again. I'm going to eat it again. Ah, ah. Yummo. Anyway, it's really delicious. So, have a go at these. They are so delicious. Once they've all cooled down, I'll take a lovely photo for you so that you can see. But they won't last long. I'll be taking them into work with me on Monday <laughs> and share with my co-workers. And, um, yeah. Let me know what you think of them if you've tried my recipe. There are other recipes where you just creme butter on its own or you put all the ingredients in and then you mix them all together. Um, I, I don't know. There's so many different ways of doing it. This is the way I like it. I get the best results, the best texture, which is important. So, yeah, let me know what you think of them, guys. And uh, let me know if you've made any. All right. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for joining me in my kitchen. And um, I will see you all real soon for the next video. Okay, <laughs> bye for now.